Hey, I'm Cameron McKenzie, and I want to quickly show you how to sign Java JAR files with JARSigner. To sign a JAR file, the first thing you need is a JAR to sign. As you can see, I've got my Spock Lizard Docker project here on GitHub and in the Walmart directory, sorry, that's a target directory, we've got a JAR file called Spock Lizard JAR. If you know anything about Git, all you have to do is just clone that repository. You could even download the zip file if you really wanted to. And you can bring all these files to your local file system. I have done that. You can see the Walmart folder there, sorry, target, and you can see my Spock Lizard JAR file right there and you're probably wondering the same thing that I'm wondering which is is that jar file verified well if you got the Java bin on the path of your operating system all you have to do is say jar signer could you verify that jar called Spock lizard 1.0 jar and well <laughs> it does its job but it's not the result we wanted it says the jar is not signed so we're gonna have to do some work here we're gonna have to create some primary keys public keys private keys not primary keys I'm getting my jar signing and JDBC mixed up here um, then we're gonna have to do all of this creating of public keys and private keys and key stores using the key tool from the JDK. Now, by the way, if you were wondering where JarSigner came from, or even this tool that I'm going to be using in a moment, which is key tool, they're all in the bin directory of the JDK. So I've got the bin directory of the JDK on my path. If you don't, well, put it on your path. And if not, then you're going to have to actually explicitly put the full path to these cool little files uh, when you actually run them. Now, where's that jar signer? Right there. And again, the one that I want to use now is the key tool, which will allow me to generate some keys. So without any further ado, let's get going with our key store. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say, hey, key store, Hey, key tool, um, generate a key for me. Uh, the alias is just going to be server, right? It's going to be a, a, the server key. Put in key ALG and make that an RSA key. The password will just be password. We're pretty boring. The password for storing it, the store pass will just be password. And what's the name of the key store? The place is going to hold all of this great information. <laughs> We're not very creative. We're going to call it keystore.jks. Take a second to verify that. Key tool gen key alias server key alg rsa key pass is password. The storage pass is password, and the key store is just going to be called keystore.jks. Now look up here. You're going to see some magic happen when I click return. What's your first name? Well, I guess the first name is Cameron McKenzie. That's first and last. What's the organizational unit? TSS. What's the org tech target? What's the name of my city? Toronto. State, Ontario. I'm in Canada. Does that look good? Yes. And then boom, that key store is created. Now I want to actually get the uh, server certificate out of there. And I can do that quite easily. I just have to say to that key tool, hey, um, you know what? I want you to actually put that server certificate, the one we aliased with the name server, and I want you to actually just export that to the file system so I can use it to do some verifications later. Password we use for a key store was just password, as you may recall. I'm going to save it with the name server.cer. That seems pretty, pretty innocuous. And the file we're trying to export is in a key store. And the key store is called keystore.jks. Again, we're not very creative in our names, but I'm just saying, hey, pull out the server certificate that you created that's currently stored in this key store where you got our public and private keys. Let's pull the server key out there. It looks like I typed something in incorrectly. And of course, it's not key tool, it's key tool. So let's try that one more time. And boom, when we run this, you end up seeing that server certificate right there. And so with the key store set up, with our server certificate sitting right there, staring right at us, well, I guess the only other thing to do is to sign this jar file. And so I'll go back to the jar signer and I'll say, hey, you know, go into that key store named keystore 
jkjks. And what we want to do is we want to assign a jar file. And specifically, the jar file that we want to sign is that Spock lizard file. And we want to call it the signed jar when we're done. And so it's the Spock lizard 1.0 jar that we want to sign. And what do we want to sign it with? Well, we want to sign it with that server alias that we set up. So I click enter here. What's the passphrase? Well, we know it's password. And then all of a sudden we get a new jar file called signed jar. And is that signed jar signed? Well, there's an easy way to find out. All you have to say is jar signer. Hey, can you uh, verify that uh, signed jar? And it'll say, you know what? no problem we can verify it the verification is done and you can see that the jar is verified it has been indeed signed now it's worried a little bit because it knows that the person that created the public key and the private key is the same person and it looks like we don't have an expiration date on there so it's only going to give us six months worth of activity there maybe even that's four months um, but that's good enough. We can deal with those issues later. But you can see that we have signed this jar file. And then when we ask the jar signer to verify it, it says, that's a darn good job that we've done. And there you go. That's how easy it is to sign Java jar files with jar signer. Now, if you enjoyed that tutorial, why don't you head over to the serverside.com. We've got lots of other great tutorials over there on Java, the JDK, and enterprise development in general. If you're interested in my personal antics, you can always follow me on Twitter at CameronMCNZ and subscribe on the YouTube.